자 이제 기초 강연을 듣도록 하겠습니다. 켈튼 루트 교수는 이 박정희 리더십과 한국의 경제 발전을 다룬 책 자본과 공모를 쓴 저자이죠. 어, 켈튼 루트 교수로부터 창조 경제와 박정희 리더십에 대해서 들어보도록 하겠습니다. Thank you uh, for inviting me to do this very, uh, very honor to, to be here, and uh, I'm going to try to um, link the concept of the creative economy with the um, ideas that underlie Park chung leadership during the early stages of the industrialization of South Korea. So I'm going to try to discuss uh, how the challenges that Park chung faced uh, in, in the early 60s are in some way similar to the challenges that, that, that exist today with regard to the creative economy. In some sense, the two challenges are similar. They, they both require a great deal of coordination. The, the, the um, coordination challenge that Park Chung-hee faced was that the promises of economic development are in the future, and the sacrifices uh, have to be made in the present. So, challenge is to encourage or uh, to create mechanisms, and this is the key word, uh, that encourage people to believe that if they make the sacrifice today, that the benefits will accrue to them tomorrow. So the challenge for the creative economy is that there is a gap, a very large gap, between the foundational science and the market. Many of the key players uh, in, for developing a, a creative economy uh, exist here in, in Korea, but the challenge will be to develop the appropriate mechanisms so that they're all working together. So here, here is the dilemma. The creative economy requires highly skilled scientific uh, capabilities among individuals who are highly trained in engineering and in science. And these are usually very young people who, who have been exposed to scientific principles and, and exposed to uh, underlying engineering concepts that, that are critical for new technologies. So, uh, there's no doubt that, that Korea has many of these capabilities, that, that there are many highly uh, trained extremely capable science, scientists and engineers in, in, in South Korea. But this is only one part of the, the, the question of developing a creative economy. But the next part is how you connect the ideas and, and products and concepts, how you actually turn them into products, how you uh, uh, connect the science with the marketplace. And this, this, this requires a different set of skills. This requires the skills of usually more mature, older individuals who have experience with legal frameworks, who have experience with contracts, who have experience with uh, distributors, who have experience with marketing, packaging, getting things actually into boxes and on the shelves in, of, of stores and into the minds of, of, of potential consumers. This is a completely different skill set than that required to create the, the, the science. I haven't said anything about the financing. Of course, scientific engineers need some financing. Uh, and that's something Korea also has, because Korea has large financial institutions that are capable of managing the financial requirements for the new, for the new technologies. The, the, the problem with the financing side is that the money is coming from either individuals or corporations or foundations that have no uh, knowledge of the intrinsic underlying science. Uh, so once again, there's a missing middle. So there needs to be a mechanism to get the money and the knowledge about the markets connected to the science. And in the United States, 
this role is played by, by what's known as venture capitalists. And by venture capitalists, I'm actually referring to a, a wide variety of skills and, 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 and appetite for risk, including angel investors who come in the very early part of an investment, investors who are interested in products that are close to being marketed, uh, people who know how to uh, conduct an IPO, uh, initial public offering, people who know how to uh, create the right governance structure so that the initial public offering will be successful. The countries around the world that wanted to create information economies, knowledge economies, creative economies, they typically find this middle uh, stage or mi missing middle they typically find that this is the most difficult part uh, because they don't have that skill set uh, available at, uh, in the country because that, that skill set is acquired over many years. So, so, so this, the challenge of, of, of building this, this, middle case, this middle set of capabilities to create the linkage, the connection between the, the marketplace and the consumer and the engineers, the founders of companies, and the, found, the, the founders of ideas. This is usually the problem for most uh, emerging uh, technology centers in the world. They don't have this skill set. So from my perspective, the biggest challenge for the uh, new Ministry of uh, Creative Economy and Coordination is precisely creating and designing the mechanisms for coordination in a green context. So, so let me now switch to the subject of, of how this relates to, to Park Chung-hee's modernization of the, of the fatherland. Also at that time, there was a lack of uh, mechanisms to facilitate the transition from a kind of family-based traditional Confucian society to a competitive, impartial, and uh, capitalist kind of economy. The mechanisms to do this had to be created during the time of Park chung hees presidency. So, so a lot of people view the, the Park chung hee period as one of a kind of top-down model uh, where, where led entirely by administrative decrees and by a very strong uh, but uh, a st strong central uh, governmental capability. But as, as we've learned to more about the Park chung period, and as we uh, compare his administration with that of many other developing country administrations, we begin to see that, that a lot of the real success was in the creation of these coordination mechanisms and facilitating the flow of information through the entire society. So I'll just mention a few of these mechanisms. Of course, the audience here is more familiar with them than I am, but one is the Economic Planning Board and the role that it played in providing the overarching coordination for the entire bureaucracy to ensure that all of the agents of the government were putting, uh, were, were co coordinating their activities according to the national plan, according to the vision. So the next mechanism was the transformation of the bureaucracy and putting it on a performance and merit basis uh, rather than a hierarchical and, and uh, 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 basis of, of people being promoted because of seniority. So he changed that completely. He swept away the, the whole seniority system and put in a performance-based system. So he made sure that rewards and recognition of the bureaucracy went to those individuals and bureaus and agencies that were effectively implementing the, the, the government's plan for development. So another very critical mechanism was the development of, of business councils, export promotion council, and in, in which very high quality information uh, and timely information was, was, was uh, disseminated and diffused between the, the policy makers and the industry leaders. So, 
so I call this a state society uh, interface, government business interface, where effective communication occurs, and also where trust accumulates both between the private sector players and between the private sector and the government. So, so trust is developed not just by uh, decrees and by orders and demands or commands from the central government, but it's, it's more a question of the, con the, the consistency with which the government made its promises credible so that the other partners in the society would, would, would carry out their job as well. So you can see that in, in creating a, a creative economy, there's also very high barriers to trust uh, that have to be overcome because the, the founders of companies have to be uh, have, have to believe that the promises that are, that are made to them by the governing board or by the financial uh, or even by the government officials who are helping them develop their companies that they will still be, uh, that the fruits of their work will accrue to them, and that the promises made uh, to them with regard to the uh, proprietary rights that they have and, uh, to, their, to their ideas, all of these uh, require long-term commitments that have to be met. So, so Bob Chung-hee Chung understood that, that in order for the Korean modernization to be a success, there had to be very strong cap uh, credibility uh, of government and, and people working together, each believing in the other one. And, and this involves coordination, above all. This involves mechanisms which will, will, will be developed over time, the right mechanisms to, to manage this process. Uh, and, and this involves uh, an environment of, of, of engagement of, 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 of discourse and information sharing. Uh, and, and this is really what characterizes the, the Park chung -hee administration, was the uh, engagement of the entire society in, 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 in inquiring and disseminating the information necessary for the right decisions to be made and for changes to be made as required. So it wasn't just having a five-year plan. It was having the capability to uh, ensure and monitor that, 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 that benchmarks were being met, that targets were being met, and that appropriate actions were taken, and that changes could be made as needed. So my final remark today would be that the experience uh, of modernization that we associate with Park Chung Hee is one in which we see the importance of institutionalizing new organizations, of institutionalizing new mechanisms, of creating the mechanisms for new operational modes and processes for interaction, diffusion of knowledge, so spreading of information, sharing of information, rewarding uh, individuals and groups for their, their role. So this is about adapting, not adapting policies to outmoded or ineffective capabilities. This is about, and this is a, a translation of, of one of Park chung uh, messages, uh, quote, change the capabilities and you can accelerate performance and growth. And so I think the challenge for the creative economy today is exactly to create the capabilities. I also include the mechanisms so that the, the performance and growth of the economy that was started under Park and he can continue uh, to make the, what you've been calling the second stage of development.